Hello everyone, back to you into our latest Star Wars video. It's been a little while since I've done a Star Wars video here on the channel, but the last one that I did, I said that I'd talk a little bit about the connection between uh, Padme Amidala, of course, the wife of Anakin Skywalker and the mother of uh, Luke and Leia. Uh, I said I'd talk a little bit about the connection between Padme and also uh, Shakespeare's tragic heroine, Ophelia. And it's more to do with imagery, uh, really. The final image of uh, Padme, which we see there uh, on Naboo uh, during her funeral at the very end of Revenge of the Sith, uh, it's always struck me that there is a, a real similarity to a very famous portrait of the sort of demise of a fear. I'll talk about that very shortly. They all brought it out more generally to the art of uh, George Lucas, because George Lucas is a very, very visual director. I always say this in the videos. Everybody sort of criticises George for his um, dialogue uh, and uh, for, for his dialogue flaws, if you like. But George creates his films in a very visual and uh, sort of musical and lyrical uh, way so he is telling the story visually uh, and through sound primarily so he says his star films are silent movies and that is particularly true of uh, uh, the George Lucas directed uh, Star Wars film so the original Star Wars film and also the three prequels um, and some of those visual uh, cues uh, take their um, take their sort of um, role from uh, previous works, if you like, and also from famous images. So George will take a famous image and he will kind of like rework it and re-sculpt it into something that's relevant for his story. And we'll go through a few of those uh, when we're done with this first part of the video talking about Padme and Ophelia. And also George likes to create um, homages to previous films, to previous directors. So we'll talk about that uh, as well. But just to say that if you're enjoying the style of content on the channel, don't get a chance to upload it enough but if you are enjoying the stars content on the channel please like share and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think to this video so we begin by looking at uh, this um, image of Padme uh, Natalie Portman of course uh, who at this point in, at the end of Avengers of Sith has died and uh, we're on Naboo it's her funeral and uh, she's uh, she's in a coffin she's going to be buried or uh, whatever is going to happen to her in terms of her uh, funeral on uh, Naboo and we see her there uh, sort of laid out uh, within the coffin notice that uh, the dress she's wearing is very evocative of water so we can't see a full shot of her but um, the, the dress is kind of like evocative of uh, of water and of streams uh, where we have these um, blue uh, the, these blue trails just here notice her hair is very uh, is very opened out through the coffin and we also have uh, flowers and petals uh, surrounding uh, surrounding the, the body of uh, Padme. So that's kind of like the final time uh, we see Padme. And then if I take you through to this image, now this is uh, a famous work uh, of, uh, of Ophelia. This was created in uh, 1850, I think, uh, by John Everett Malice, and you can see this at the Tate Gallery co uh, collection. It's one of the uh, one of the great works of art based on Shakespeare's um, based on Shakespeare's works. So. Uh, Again, it's a very famous image, and we see that Ophelia, in this image, is submitting herself to water. Now, what's happened to Ophelia at this point is that um, her, her lover, uh, Hamlet, has, uh, has um, become a murderer, has murdered her father, actually. And uh, that uh, Hamlet becoming a murderer has kind of, like, driven her... Uh, mad and uh, she's unable to cope with the fact that uh, Hamlet has become a murderer so uh, she um, goes picking flowers in this very uh, dreamlike sort of state and she climbs uh, she climbs a tree the branch breaks and she falls into this sort of stream or river 
And at this point, she kind of like just submits herself to to the river. You can see it's not particularly deep, so she could, in theory, rescue herself. But because she can, she is unable to cope with the fact that Hamlet has become a murderer, has murdered her father. Uh, she is unable to cope with uh, with this news. So she submits herself instead to uh, to the river, to the water. And uh, she dies. You can see that there's uh, the long flowing hair on either side of, uh, of Ophelia's head. And you can see the flowers uh, and the petals that are surrounding her she, before she falls out of the tree. She, uh, she is picking flowers in, uh, in a meadow. Uh, notice the dress. It's different to uh, Padme's, but it is very evocative again uh, of kind of like a long flowing uh, sort of dress. Um, and I think there, I've always thought there's a very, very striking similarity between the final image of Padme here on uh, Naboo and this famous work of art from John Everett Mallas uh, uh, depicting the final moments of Ophelia. There's one crucial difference, which is the hands. So Ophelia's hands are up and open, uh, whereas Padme's hands are closed and uh, holding on to the snippet of Jipur that Anakin gave her. Uh, that Anakin gave her. Uh, on, uh, on, uh, I think gave it to uh, on the Naboo ship in the Phantom Menace when they go from, uh, from Tatooine to Coruscant, um, kind of like a love token, if you like, uh, and I. Uh, you're not going to get a like for like with George Lucas, but I think there's uh, there's enough there to suggest that despite the difference in the hand movements, uh, despite the fit, difference in the hand placements, I should say, uh, both images are very very evocative of uh, one another. I think um, I mean they could have had uh, Pammy's hands in a different situation. Obviously, you wouldn't have had them sticking out uh, when she's in a coffin, but they could have had it in a slightly different situation. I think they wanted to uh, emphasize the point of the Japur snippet, uh, but she's holding uh, the love token that Anakin gave her as a child, just to kind of like remind the audience of, uh, uh, of where Anakin came from. And also, of course, uh, there's the bump there, the baby bump. So. Um, the rest of the galaxy. At this point, Luke and they have been born, and uh, they have been hidden by Obi-Wan Kenobi and Bail Organa. Uh, but everybody else in the galaxy is led to believe that the, babies, the baby dies with um, with Padme. So uh, it's to, I, I think the position of the hand placement is to highlight the bump and also uh, to uh, highlight the snippet of Jipur. But uh, that difference aside, I've always thought there is a very, very striking similarity between uh, the final images of Padme and the final images of Ophelia in Hamlet. And uh, I, I believe that George Lucas very much was basing uh, the final time that we see Padme in a coffin uh, on the uh, final image, or on this famous image, I suppose, as it's created well after Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. So let's say this sort of final uh, or uh, famous image of, uh, of the final moments of Athelia. Uh, there are also other cues, though, within uh, the Star Wars uh, methodology and the Star Wars uh, law. So uh, this one, for example, is The Searchers versus Attack of the Clones. The Searchers is a John Ford Western uh, from 1956. Fantastic film. If you've never seen The Searchers, do have a look at that. So uh, on the top image here, we have uh, we have an image from The Searchers. From the searchers, this is uh, this is um, I think John Wayne's character looking out onto an Indian settlement uh, below him. He, that's uh, that's our lead character just there, standing on this cliff edge, looking down onto this Indian settlement. This is from uh, Attack of the Clones. That's Anakin looking down onto the settlement of the Tuscan Raiders. They, they are too similar to not to be, that not to be a homage to uh, John Ford and to the searchers. George Lucas has framed that shot, although there's slight differences again in that uh, the searchers is in daylight, um, Attack of the Clones is in, uh, is in darkness. So there are slight images, uh, there's slight differences within the two images, uh, the same as there are slight differences with the two images there. There's slight differences between the two images here. But again, they are so similar that uh, they can't possibly, that can't possibly, 
possibly not be a homage from George Lucas to uh, Attack of the Clothes. Something else that always um, struck a lot of debate on the forums when Revenge of the Sith came out was was this. Uh, so this is, of course, smoke rising from uh, the Jedi Temple. It's the Jedi Temple in flames. And there was always a lot of speculation about whether that image um, was taken or was uh, kind of like inspired in a way. But inspired seems uh, a pretty grim word, really, given the subject matter. But there, there was always a similarity or seemed to be a similarity between uh, that image of the, the Jello Temple in flames and that image of smoke rising out of the Jedi, uh, out of the World Trade Center, just purely because of the uh, the blue uh, sky, the blue surround, and then the way that smoke is uh, billowing up and going off to uh, going off to the left, and we see again on here the smoke is billowing up and then going off to the left, uh, smoke uh, rising over. Uh, Manhattan smoke rising over Coruscant. Again, they seem very, very similar. I think that one is a little bit more uh, flimsy because you could probably make an argument that any sort of uh, image or shot of a burning building and smoke rising over skyline is uh, is invocative evocative of the uh, 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 World Trade Center and the terrible terrible events that took place on September the eleventh, two thousand and one. Uh, so I think that's a little bit more flimsy. Whether there is indeed a connection there, but um, they always have looked very similar. And I remember when Revenge of the Sith came out, when well, it was primarily the trailer actually, because this shot is featured within the final trailer, I think. Of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, there was always uh, a lot of um, speculation, discussion on the forums about, on the Star Wars forums, about whether the uh, shot of the smoke rising and the Jedi Temple in flames uh, was um, kind of like uh, supposed to be uh, evocative or emotive of uh, what happened in the World Trade Center. There is a definite homage in Revenge of the Sith to the Godfather. So we're at StarWars.com. I'll just read you uh, this little bit that they say just here. Revenge of the Sith boasts what might be the most elaborate homage to the Godfather. Of course, Francis, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, long-term mentor and friend of uh, George Lucas. Uh, so, uh, again, just going back to that, Revenge of Sith bows what might be most uh, elaborate homage to the Godfather during the formation of the Empire sequences. In the Godfather, Michael Corleone presides over the christening of the next generation of Corleones, which is intercut with shots of his enforcers assassinating the remaining mob uh, leaders that stand in the way of his consolidated control of the criminal underworld. The same could be said of the birth of the new Galactic Empire with Palpatine presiding, uh, according to George Lucas, on the Revenge of the Sith commentary. The sequence was specifically intercut with Anakin killing leaders of the Trade Federation as a homage to the best picture winner of 1972, uh, The Godfather. So I'll just show you a little bit of that. This is uh, Baptism Murders, The Godfather uh, 8 to 9 movie clip. Um, I can only show you a little bit of this because it's very, very violent. So I'm only going to show you a tiny little portion uh, of this. But we begin with, this is uh, coming from Movie Clips, by the way. I'm going to leave the link in the description. We begin with uh, Michael Corleone uh, at uh, the christening there. And then we go on to uh, a shot of uh, some of Michael Corleone's enemies being taken out. That's as much as I can show because the rest gets very, very gory and very, very bloody. But just going back to that, we begin with uh, Corleone at the christening of this very innocent little baby. Uh, and uh, we go from that christening uh, through to, again, this shot of uh, uh, Corleone's enemies being taken out uh, in that particular scene, and back to the Christian. And so it intercuts, it goes on. I can't show you anymore because it gets very, very uh, violent, very, very uh, gory and bloody. Now, that is very, very indicative of this, which is Anakin kills the Separatists on Mustafar. So this is the Separatist slaughter of Anakin Skywalker on uh, Mustafar intercut with Palpatine uh, declaring the uh, declaring the Empire but I my resolve 
has never been stronger. Fabulous scene from Ian McDermott. So then back again to Anakin slaughtering uh, the Sepulchus on Mustafa uh, getting rid of the final remnants of the Confederacy of Independent Systems and allowing Palpatine to uh, become the Emperor of the Universe. The Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. So, again, we see very, very evocative uh, sort of uh, imagery between those two films. We've got, um, and the point about the intercutting, of course, uh, between the two scenarios, is that the point George Lucas was trying to get across is that we have very violent imagery going on. We've got the, the slaughter of, uh, of the separatists on Mustafa. We've got the slaughter... I'll just pause that there. Oh, it's going to finish anyway. So we've got the slaughter of uh, the separatists. Let's go back to there. We've got the slaughter of the uh, separatists on Mustafa uh, by Anakin at the same time as Palpatine is declaring the, em the Empire. Um, we've got... Um, the, the sort of massacre of uh, Michael Corleone's uh, enemies uh, while he's at this christening of this innocent little baby. And the, the point is that the, the quieter uh, scenes, like the christening and the decoration of the Empire, the two scenes that are not violent, but they are actually more horrific than the, the violent scenes because what Corleone is going to do to that innocent little baby is corrupt that baby. That baby will become eventually what Michael Corleone is. Michael Corleone will turn that innocent uh, baby into a mobster, into a murderer. And, of course, what Palpatine is doing is far, far worse than what Anakin is doing because what Palpatine is doing is going to affect the entire universe as the Empire sort of bears down on what used to be the Republic, uh, you're going to find massacres taking place across the galaxy and tremendous suffering and tremendous evil will engulf the galaxy. Uh, so we've got the two violent scenes and the two quiet scenes, but the two quiet scenes are actually more horrific than the two violent scenes in a lot of ways. And again, this is all part of the uh, of the art of George Lucas, this way George Lucas creates his films. Uh, there is always far more going on in a George Lucas film than you will think just from the surface. And uh, that's the reason I love George Lucas's uh, Star Wars films and uh, the, the few films, he hasn't made many films, but the few films that George Lucas has created, I always get something from them, something very, very inspiring out of George Lucas's work. Uh, it's not easy to understand what George Lucas is doing uh, with his films, and that's why they come in for a, a great deal of criticism, particularly the prequels, came in for a huge amount of criticism uh, when they was released. But I just asked, with the sequel trilogy, which have been very well received by the critics, but is there any moment in the sequel trilogy that we have so far with The Force Awakens and with uh, The Last Jedi, is there anything within the sequel trilogy that is as evocative as these images that we've been discussing in this video? Is there anything that is as artistic as uh, what George Lucas did in Revenge of the Sith with the uh, homage to the Godfather? Is there anything... Uh, kind of like um, subliminal within the sequel trilogy that we get uh, to the kind of level that we get with uh, with the prequels. I don't think there is, and I think there is more creativity. I've said this before. There is more creativity and uh, more ideas within the first ten to fifteen minutes of the Phantom Menace than in the entirety of The Force Awakens. I do have to say the large J is pretty creative. Nothing to the level of George Lucas, but it is pretty creative. It is pretty original. And so that's why I just rated that little bit ahead of The Force Awakens, actually, just purely because of the fact that Ryan Johnson is slightly more visual with his storytelling, but nowhere near the same extent as George Lucas. But really, um, the, the 
Thor's Ways in particular is just such a dull, dull film. There is nothing artistic or creative in that film like we see uh, with George Lucas's original work. And particularly with George Lucas's prequels, I have to say, the lambasted in a lot of ways prequels. But I really, really like the prequels and I love Revenge of the Sith. And the reason, again, a lot of it is due to the creativity and uh, the ideas that are at work within those films. I've gone on far longer than I anticipated, 20 minutes, but I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, then please like, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Am I uh, on something with those, um, with those uh, images and ideas? Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, we'll be back with more Star Wars content very, very soon. Thanks for watching.